So I'm going to show you my favorite way of using Flux for free. Now this platform is called Creer.ai. So the website is Creer.ai. And if you look onto this, you'll be brought to this home screen here where you can see several different sections available. Now, what the Creer just is, I'll explain pretty quickly. If you're not familiar, it's a site that hosts various different AI functionality. So it's got image generation, it's got AI video generation, um, enhancement and upscaling and some other some other sort of legacy features as well and this is updated on a very regular basis with some new technologies so how it works is you create an account which i've already done because i've used this before i've just a free account it's free to set up you don't need to obviously they have paid subscriptions that allow you to use more things and that kind of thing but I don't, I like free for this, so I'm just, I've just got a free account. And the benefit of using this on a free account is, if you click on the main generate images here, they've recently added Flux to their repertoire of image generation models. Now, if you go to the bottom left, you'll see there's a little pop-up here, and it's got Flux, which is selected as default, and then Ideogram, Ideogram 2 Turbo, and Flux 1.1 Pro, which are three other models that are not available on the free version. Um, so you can see they're sort of grayed out and they've got the red text just because they use too much more, too much compute power for them to justify giving it away for free. So what we do have is we have a version of Flux. Now I say a version of Flux because it says here, fast quality model optimized for Korea. So it, it's not clear exactly what version it is, but the closest I found is Flux Dev. It's pretty close to just stock Flux Dev, so a decent model. So how it works is you get a daily allowance of um, usage here. So mine's at 0% because it refreshes every 24 hours, I think, and, um, and I've not used any today. And as you generate an image in uh, Flux, it will then take some of that um, percentage away and it will build up until you've got none left for the day. So let's just, let's just go in here and let's just put a prompt in. It's going to open up my trusty page of um, pre-written prompts to paste in. And the only controls you really have on here is aspect ratio. So you can choose um, from any of these options. And you have a an icon underneath that to randomize the prompt if you're stuck and you want some inspiration. And then you've got a, a style button here, which I'll probably cover in a separate video, but it's kind of like a bit like a Laura. I'm not going to select any of these at the moment, but just so you know, you can go down and you can select all, any one of all these different styles and it will apply that kind of look to your prompt. It's not going to copy it exactly. It's not going to make it look 100% like this, but it's going to push it in the direction of that style. And there's absolutely tons to choose from. So that's a really quick and convenient way of getting some different looks into your sort of uh, your flux generations. So anyway, I'm going to click generate. Now, what this does as a default is it will generate four images in this version of Flux. You can't change that. There's very limited parameters. You don't even get a seed value you can use, which is which is fine. Um, so it's generates our four images there super quickly. And if we go up to the top now, we can see that it's used 8.51%. So um, you can you can figure out for yourself by that how many generations you'd be able to get with your daily usage. But it's quite a lot. Um, and it's quite generous considering it's a good quality version of Flux as well. It's not like a, it's not like a really low end version. You see from this, the quality is the quality is really there. My only nitpick is when you go into an image like this, if you there's no X on the screen to exit out. If you click the back button on your browser, on my browser anyway, on a Mac, um, Chrome on a Mac, it just takes you back to the main screen. It doesn't take you back to the previous screen, which is kind of annoying. So you just have to click on that piece again and. Um, you know, you can go back into it on the left hand side. There's a little um, history of icons and, and jobs that you've recently ran um, that you can just go back in. But just a minor point. So what you can do from here is you can either choose to keep running different prompts or unfortunately it's got a video option here. You cannot use the um, video functionality on the free account. Um, so if you click on that, it'll just come up and say subscribe. So which is understandable. What's quite nice is the variation button. So this is a bit like um, an option you get in like mid journey. So if there's one particular variant of the four generations that you prefer and you want to see a few more of those, you can click on the variation button and it will take that as like a base 
image to then generate four more ideas off. So you can see they've all got lighter coloured shirts, they've all got like a sort of a smile, a very similar look. And this is a really great way to quickly narrow down the look um, and the sort of aesthetics into exactly what you're looking for. So we've got these and if we go up and check, we can see now it's used obviously another chunk of the um, usage. It does warn you when you're down to 20% of your last um, allowance for the day, it will come up with a message at the bottom. And obviously for many of these, we can just click the download button, download it, and um, you know, we can um, do whatever we like with it. One other thing we can do on the free version of Crea.ai um, though, is we can actually, um, we can actually use the upscaler and image enhancer. So if I go back to the home, so like I said, video generation is not available in the free version, um, in the free account, which is completely understandable. But what is available is a limited version of this enhancer and upscaler. So if you go to this button down here, this, this icon, or you can go to the top menu there and click enhance. If you go down and click on that, it'll load up this screen. So what you do from here is you just drag, you just drag an image on there. If I just drag on the image that I've just created, but you can drag any image in here. It can be one you've generated um, in a separate software, something in Photop, a photo that you've taken yourself. It could be anything. So it's coming over here now. Um, free account, it'll let you go up to two times upscale. Anything above that, you need to upgrade to the pro paid account. Which again, it's fine. That's fair enough. I find all these restrictions very fair on the free on the free functionality on Creator.ai. Um, I think it's it's more than enough for you to dip your toes in. So what it'll then do is it'll say upscaling active and it'll automatically fill in a prompt based on your image um, just to make sure that the upscaling is kind of guided in the right direction because this is a creative upscaler. So it's a little bit like Magnific AI if you've um, heard of that or used that. So it will add certain extra texture and details to the upscale um, in order to enhance it. Now you can control um the extent of which it does this with these sliders strength resemblance clarity and there's also a preset option down here which i've not really looked into i've not i just keep that at default and i'm not going to play with these too much here because i think that's that's a bit of a rabbit hole you can find yourself getting down i find the default settings good for most of my general upscales there's a match color tab here that you can turn on if you find that your end result is um, shifting in colors too much but i don't really um i don't really feel the need to use that and there's a scene transfer which is a completely different function which i'll probably go over in a different video but for now i'm just going to click enhance and it will just um, process for a few moments okay so that's finished the upscale and enhancement and if we drag this before and after over we can see that's the before so it's a good quality image, but at this size, it's sort of scaled it to it's quite soft and lacking detail. And as we reveal what the Create Upscaler and Enhancer has done, you can see it's really added details. If you look at the hair, it's really added lots of separation and fine details into the hair. Um, of course, the case of the dreaded AI hands are struck here on the left hand side. We've got we've got this hand with like three fingers and looking a bit strange. But those instances in Unflux are actually few and far between. It's generally really good at doing hands. I just got an, I just picked an unlucky one there. But so you can see the details in like the T-shirt and the necklace. Everything's popping off with this um, with this upscale enhancer. And then of course you can just choose to download that and use that image, and you've got a nice higher res enhanced file now the only downside of this i would say the only thing you gotta watch out for is because it is a creative upscaler so it does hallucinate new details they say so it does change elements slightly of course you can mitigate this by the settings but if you put if you were to put someone like a family photo in of someone that you know or a friend or a member of your family and run it through this the likelihood is that it will change something about them enough that it doesn't quite look like them. Um, like if you're just making an image like this, it doesn't matter because no one knows, you know, this person doesn't really exist. So it doesn't matter as long as it still looks good to you. But if you're running an actual photo through here, just bear in mind, you might have to play with the settings to get a subtle enough upscale so that you can still recognize your friend or family member.